My mic does, oh, there we go. It was not plugged in. On. I have a whole like, yeah. ring light set up and mics <laughs> and cat. I need to work on my camera situation. You, you might you might move off the center. That's all. Welcome, welcome everybody to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is elementary night, and it's not the last time we're going to do this. But um, it seemed to me that uh, you know we lean a lot towards secondary, and um, Marina has been telling me lots of things that she or some things that she's doing in her third grade classroom. And Shane contacted me from Australia. It is currently um, 11 o'clock on Thursday in Australia. Is that correct, Shane? Uh, yeah, at 10 o'clock on Thursday in Australia. So hello o'clock. from the future. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. And Chris Sloan just popped in. Welcome, welcome. Shane, we'll, we'll do better introductions here in a second. Um, no worries. Welcome. And, um, and uh, so thrilled to have just... This is just like the beginning kind of conversation, just to get things going. Let's hear what people are doing in classrooms and and um, worried about or excited about. Uh, Ruth, Nathan, would you introduce yourself first? Oh, okay. You know yeah, hi there. Um, I live in California. I've been a third grade teacher on and off hey. during the past during the past twenty five years. Um, back and forth because I also teach at UC Berkeley uh, in an adjunct uh, situation. Um, but um, yeah, I, uh, I've just learned about this, um, this writing partners. And so I'm very interested in what Paul's doing. So anyway, cool. I look forward to hearing what all of you are doing. Ruth is also, um, I don't know how, what to say about this. It, you're like an expert in James Moffat and other things, um, deep into writing project hmm. lore as well. So it's it's always nice when you join us. I, I appreciate oh, it. Oh, thank you. Welcome. You also had a textbook series, did you not, for elementary? Yeah, for, for elementary. Maybe some of your teachers use it. It was, it was at first done through Great Source. Mm -hmm. uh, right on track, Writers Express. Do you remember those? They, they I were don't, all but <laughs> yeah, I wasn't in Writers that field, Express, yeah. Right on Track, Right Away. They were handbooks for elementary kids that I wrote. Yeah, very that cool. were very, they were really popular for a long time. Great. Um, and and um, you've also organized an AI conference. Mention that briefly just to get all your credentials out. Of, <laughs> not all of them, a few of them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, I ordered, I, I organized an AI conference for next October, uh, 26 sessions, all teacher led. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, and it's, uh, it's really exciting. Um, uh, it, it takes place right on the ocean. So that's nice in Pacific Grove. And uh, we have teachers covering everything you can imagine with AI. And the interesting thing about the um, conference is that um, people stay with the same group the entire weekend. David, so you have an echo of some sort, but, but so you, you don't that. you don't go from session to session like a typical conference. You come to the session, you sign up for what you're interested in, and you stay with that group for five sessions throughout the weekend. And what group is this? The Curriculum Study Commission. And what's their motto? Oh, I don't, I don't know that it, they have a motto. They have. I thought that I uh, afraid. I, I noticed that they they were like using teachers teaching teachers, which is our phrase too. I just. Oh, okay. Yes, it, it's <laughs> always te yeah. It's you know it all started with Jim Gray, mm -hmm. the Curriculum Study Commission. All started with people like Jim Gray and Sheridan Blau and Leo Ruth and all those people started this group. James Moffat. Cool, cool. So it's it's a it's a seventy five years old now. The conference. Great. Oh wow. Um, yeah. So so cool to have you here. I really appreciate you and, and um the uh Aditya, you haven't lived as long, but do you want to introduce yourself? You won't have as many things to say. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name's Aditya, I'm an eighth grader at William Inn and, and um well I've been doing a bit with AI. I did a video series for the state technology competition about ethical uses of artificial intelligence. I've been using artificial intelligence 
to help me come up with ideas while I've been on the while I'm on the debate team and uh, just, you know, using AI, you know, in some other areas to like one off. Alana, he, he uh, created a thinking partner called Side Switcher. What does that like, do? Kind of, yeah, what does it Tell do? Tell me about that. So basically I created it to uh, take every argument, take your argument, find every single tiny thing from the, like I created it from the view of someone who's intentionally trying to point out every reason why you won't, why your argument isn't good. <laughs> And every you even the smallest I told you to use AI for, yeah, it is what you said. Yeah, yeah, wait. So, how did it did you do a debate yet with it? Uh, yeah, so I, I had the debate on Saturday. Um, so uh, we ended up uh, the school as a whole, we didn't do great, but me as an individual, like all my me and my team, we did okay. Uh, I think I was definitely the, the, the that partner made my job a little easier. Because I didn't have to think of as many of the rebuttals last minute. I was kind of writing them down during my prep okay. period and putting them on the back of my sheet. I think that was kind of useful. Like I had some rebuttals, which I was already aware of. Um, and I think it's really, <laughs> there were some arguments in which, like, everybody, in which, like, when we were doing the group brainstorms, nobody was able to come up with anything. And then somehow we managed to win the argument on the side that we weren't able to come up with anything. Wow. Which I thought was interesting. Really incredible. I don't. I think that big rebuttal kind of played a lot, a, a large part of it. So it was useful. That's awesome. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. That, that's such a clever let's, idea. Let's, we'll next, hear more. I let's let's something interesting. people, I, I love that you're, you're interrupting my, my, my uh, introductory flow because it's taking too long, but anyways, thank you. Keep doing it. Chris Sloan, how are you? Oh, you're muted. Awesome. You, okay. Should we wait? Continue waiting? Okay. About that? Okay. That's good. Yes. Yeah. So uh, my name is Chris Sloan. I teach English and media production and photography to high school students in Salt Lake City, Utah. And um, yeah, so there was a mention of James Moffat. So <laughs> I have to go there first. Uh, mm -hmm. I. When I first started, I used his interaction series. Oh, uh, yeah. Everybody's familiar with that. I still have some of those in my classroom because there's kind of some good stuff in there. But uh, as far as AI goes, um, yeah, I've been using it with my seniors in an AP English language and composition class, uh, helping them with um, lately just kind of doing their own um, what's called now an open letter. Um, so they're writing an open letter to someone, but it's for a bigger audience about a local issue that um, they Ooh. care about. So we're also, yeah. we're also doing open letters in Mr. Doronsky's class. Nice. Cool. Chris, what, we'll have to see if that fits into um, C3WP's uh, using sources tool. Are they using are they using sources in their yeah. letters? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so we should look into that a little bit. Yeah, Alana, let's check. thanks. Quick introductions. Thank you for stopping. Hello, my name is Alana Winnick. Um, Marina, who is on here, we work in the same district together. And first, I'm just going to say I would not be as successful as I am without her because all my crazy <laughs> ideas, she's there alongside with me trying it with her students. I was an elementary educator and now I am the director of technology and data protection officer of a school district in Westchester. Um, and I also sit on the nice skate board of directors, which is like a ISTE affiliate for New York state. And I host a podcast and wrote a book, which thank you so much for Paul for putting it, it in right in the center. Yeah, um, <laughs> that link on the table will take you to the podcast, other things and the book. Is good. Yeah. So I, all of it is about generative artificial intelligence and the future of education. And that's kind of where my focus has been over this past year and a half. Um, but with an emphasis really for me on the future of education in a world with artificial intelligence, because I think that's the most important thing. And I'm Paul. Um, I'm thrilled to have you all here. Um, uh, Shane, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, g'day, I'm Shane. Uh, I'm coming to you from um, Brisbane, Australia. 
Uh, I've started the journey over the last um, 12 months trying to learn about AI and how to leverage it to uh, help with education. And uh, through my investigations, that's connected me with Paul and writing partners. And so I'm now trying out the writing partners um, tool to see if that can help with um, uh, teachers in Australia for identifying how to help their kids. So, yeah, I'm so pleased to be here. Cool. Marina, finally, and Dave Cole as well. But, yeah. Oh, hi, I'm Marina. Um, Alana kind of mentioned me already. I'm a third grade educator at um, the school of uh, Picanago in Westchester. And we've been doing a lot of really fun exploration with our third graders who are really, really into all of this stuff as well. So we've been learning a lot with them and what they are capable of and it's pretty incredible. Like we had our, um, we had like our pr proud, proud family moment, like because mm -hmm. the Alana had a bunch of her colleagues from around our area visit our district. She hosted a meeting of other directors of technology. There probably was about 15 to 20 um, educators and they visited our classroom, not during anything around artificial intelligence, just to actually see our audio enhancement system. But then a couple of my students who are eight and nine years old actually went with Alana and did an impromptu panel. And it's pretty amazing and fascinating to hear young children talk about credible sources and data privacy and security. Yeah. This was unscripted, unplanned. Yeah. I just said, tell them what you do with technology. And then I opened it up to audience questions mm -hmm. and we did not prepare them for any of this. Mm -mm. <laughs> they were so wow. confident and they, awesome. they really had a good handle on what they were, they had really ownership of what they were talking about too. Yeah, <laughs> Marina wasn't even there for it. She was not even there. I <laughs> wish I caught the whole thing on video. When I said to them, what do you do with, technology in the classroom. I mean, Marina is amazing. She just won an innovative teacher award. So congratulations, Marina. I didn't know um, if we were allowed to announce that yet. Why not? It's yeah. public. Okay. No, it's on the internet. It's public. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so this one. Well, congratulations. I, 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 I do want to introduce, I, <laughs> very good. Yes. If you don't know how to clap, you can figure that out. Uh, and, and Dave Cole, quick introduction, sure. just so you can interrupt later and we'll know who you are. Yeah, yeah sure. So, um, Oh, okay. Carry on. You wanted to run? You said, no, no, go ahead. No, introduce yourself. Uh, I was a, originally, my first career was a teacher for 13 years, uh, third grade, fourth grade, 12th grade college. Um, and then I went into education technology and uh, back to graduate school, got a couple degrees um, in writing and in lit. And so I've always been around writers, but I've spent a lot of time around schools and districts and teachers, leaders and engineers and have worked with tech for a long time. And so AI is particularly interesting to me, especially the fact that we're now working with natural language as a programming vehicle. So I connected with Paul and the group here and it's been just a real treat to get to know you all and hear from you and learn from you. All right. I, I just wanna let you, everyone keep talking, but Marina, let's come to you and have you do a little more careful description of the steps you went through for the biography project and emphasizing some of the AI stuff you did. Does that sound okay? I don't know if you're prepared to share anything, but you don't have to. I'm not prepared to share talk. anything, but I can certainly talk okay. through. Great, great. Let it. me mention also at the bottom, there's a button that says gallery. If you prefer to like make the table go away and just see people's faces, you can hit that button. Just to let you know that. Okay. Marina, what have you been working on the last month? Is it a month long, you think? Or it's so? about, yeah, six weeks, the writing what? units usually are. So in our third grade curriculum, we have our students research and write biographies about an individual that they would like to learn more about. And we kept it like pretty open. So it could be anybody obviously that there was resources available for and trying to get, I want to get to the AI part first. So uh, we also wanted them to look through the lens of perseverance too. So not just, you know, um, a list of facts that are important about 
the person, but getting a little bit deeper into what their dreams and goals were, per obstacles and barriers that might have been in their way, and then the how they overcame those as well as their accomplishments. And did you, mention, real, did you mention the habit of mind there or you just used it? I did I didn't, but this is good because I think even when we talked, like I I want to like circle back to that with the with the children too. Mm -hmm. So we actually used perplexity, which was not a brand new tool to me. Paul and I had tinkered around with it a little bit with the loot stem residents from Lehman, Alana had been speaking about it quite a bit since it was a tool that could be used. Kids don't have to sign in. And it also creates a shareable link so that the students could share with me the information that they were getting back. It also includes a list of resources and it limits it to five. So it was a really great opportunity for me to build in some critical media literacy work with the children and vetting sources from the internet that the artificial intelligence was pulling from. And that was a lot of fun because we got to talk about why we will check off, we'll take Wikipedia out of the mix, but we'll keep Britannica. Why we'll take out a blog post, but we may keep in the um, the person's personal website. A so just to clarify that, because because I don't know if everyone knows that you can you can look at the sources and then you can open them and then there's a checkoff list and you can take them off. Yes. And then and then is this right? Then you can regenerate and it doesn't use, it, it only uses sources you've chosen. Them. Yeah. Well, Do I have you that can correct? unselect yeah. and it will rewrite it with only the sources that you used. Um, mm -hmm. But also it, a lot of really interesting things came up. Yeah. Um, like the Red Bull thing, Marina, like that was, so one of the sources was Red Bull, like the drink. So the, the kids are at first like, well, that's not a reliable resource, Red Bull but it was actually an athlete and Red Bull was a sponsor. So then you get to start to have these deep conversations. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's legitimate now, mm -hmm. right? We didn't think that those types of conversations would have come up. Mm -mm. What kinds of things, can you give an example of what they searched for? Well, I can tell you the prompt because we kind of all use the same prompt and they had to state their age. Um, I am researching, I did Neil deGrasse Tyson for, um, well, we really did it as a whole class model. Um, so I am researching Neil deGrasse uh, Tyson. I am eight years old. I want to learn about his early life, his, the obstacles and challenges he encountered, and his achievements. Please put this information in an outline with bullets and explain it to me like I am five. <laughs> okay. How did so, it do? Yeah. It did pretty well. So it, it, it sorted out information for the students. Like we said, we went through the resources. If there was something on there that, you know, was not credible, they took it out. It, re, um, it rewrote it. And then it kind of helped give them some structure because they are at a stage where they're, you know, they're working still on their sentence um, fluency. And that sentence fluency will lead to the paragraph fluency. So this was really one of the first times they were building like multi-connected paragraphs. So this was a really good way for them to see how this part could lead to this part and how this part could lead to this part. Um, and then have the conversation around the structure that was provided. Um, that was that was pretty good. And then to explain it like I'm five really brought it into like a readability that was appropriate for them. Mm -hmm. And they were able to explain that to adults, just so you know. They said, we tell the AI to explain it like it's five, but we're not five. But that makes it easy for us to understand. They repeated that to adults. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. I, please, I, I, if some of you, well, a couple of you are relatively new here, I want to encourage you to interrupt, ask questions, and because I don't want to, I'm not like doing an interview here. So please make it a conversation. Jump in. Thoughts? Uh, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to jump in because I've got to get going in about two or three minutes. Oh, no. The, okay, um, good. Yeah. yeah, I know, which is, which is rubbish. But the good news is this time, actually, I have non-contact from 10 o'clock till 10.30 um, each Thursday. So I can actually do this time in the future. 
Um, although so, I'm already coming from the future to you. <laughs> so before you jump, tell us more about your classroom. I didn't realize you were going to get cut off. But sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, no, that, 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 that's all right. It's tell us about your frustrations, your engaged. joys, and, and your dreams about AI. <laughs> so what I'm hoping to do is to um, leverage AI to help with analyzing students who have significant challenges with writing to help um, teachers work out, well, where do I start first for helping these students? Um, so I'm currently investigating how can we leverage this tool so that for the teachers who are overburdened and flat out and don't have time to sit down and go, oh, this kid who's way behind year level expectations for writing um, and they've got spelling, grammar, syntax, content issues, where do I start with this? Because often you're marking it on holidays and you don't have time to give it the analysis to go, well, we need to start focusing on a phonemic level or we need to work at sentence level first mm -hmm. before we can get to um, mm -hmm. the, the next step. So th that's, mm -hmm. the, uh, that's the personal project I'm underway trying to investigate um, because unfortunately in my the education department is not very forward thinking at applying this in the classroom. There's very little happening with AI in classrooms. Teachers are using it to help themselves Mm -hmm. with planning in bits in sporadic ways but nothing coordinated and so hearing marina what um you and alana have been doing that's just mm -hmm. so cool and that's part of what i'm hoping that through this little niche project of looking at it with, with helping with writing that i will also learn and i'm trying to try and figure out how i can bring it in to um to the classroom so like i've got a just quickly before i go i've got a little girl in here with um significant um autism and so she really struggles verbally to um, to put together more than a couple of words. But I've worked with her to use AI to create a, a story about the solar system because that's our class focus. And then I'm getting her to add some of the drawings and then some of her words I'm using to add in the AI to create images from the image generation side of things. So that's a Jane, little experiment. Jane, that can I can, can I interrupt you just for a second? Yeah, yeah go, go for it. Go for yeah, it. Oh, no, go I, just want, I just want to ask you a question. This is marvelous. Are you, yeah, yeah. Creating, are you creating this tool yourself or are there tools that you're introducing to the kids? I wasn't clear on that. Uh, I, I don't know is the answer. So at the moment, I've just used ChatGPT the plus the paid version to do the creation for the, for the student in class. But writing partners is looking like it might be something that I can use for, for my idea. Because at the moment, it's just a concept or an idea for the writing, uh, helping the teachers when analyzing writing. But now that I've come across writing partners, I'm doing work on the holiday to see, can I come up with prompts that might actually be able to help me do this with the writing partners side of things. So uh -huh. yeah, I'm really excited by that. I don't know, <laughs> but I'm keen to find out. Um, so, yeah, so I'm, whilst, whilst I have to go, I have to say thank you so much for having me in and right. I will try and tune into future um, your, your, your take, uh, your, sessions. You said you're, you're going to be on break. Is it summer break or what is what break is it? Uh, uh, two, two weeks for Easter. So we've, we've got the next two weeks off school for Easter. So would there be another session next week? We are here every Wednesday for the rest of our lives. Yes. <laughs> 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 I didn't realize I'd signed on for that. <laughs> no, That's you it. didn't. I'm ne I can no, never no. get out. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> no, no. But wait, can can you can you block out for more than half an hour or not? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Next two weeks, definitely. I absolutely. Okay, I can block out for as much time as I so want. So let's let's continue so. this. Let's continue. So I'd yeah, love yeah. to hear, see you experiment and see what you're coming up with. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. That 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 will be awesome. Uh, and then and then as said during term, I'll actually be able to do little half hour snippets at least. To, to join in and, and reconnect. So, um, and yeah. I know you have to go, but I just want to say really fast that I, I, I can't wait till Ruth weighs in on all of those different elements of the writing that you were concerned about and how it looks like in the whole rhetoric of the of the writing assignments um, is an interesting question to kind of tease out. And maybe we, can, maybe, help us maybe we can talk about it next week. So certainly. Yeah. Oh, Certainly, James oh, yeah, Moffat has, has a lot to say about that.
<laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, I, thank you I so wanna... much, everyone. I, I hate to thank you. Bye. I don't want, want to get you in trouble. Believe, but, yeah, reality <laughs> calls. <laughs> okay. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted to say something to Mariana. Oh, yeah. What you're doing Mar is Marina. So Oh, I'm That's sorry. Okay. I'm I probably sorry. got it wrong the first four times. I'm sorry. It's you know it's so <laughs> tiny on my screen that I can barely see the letters. Yeah. So I'm sorry, okay. um, Marina. It's just absolutely fantastic what you're doing. That I mean, every single thing that you said, I'm just shaking my head, saying how perfect, how perfect. You know, when I was teaching third grade not too long ago, um, before AI, we did what you're doing, but analog all the way. You know, we had gathering grids where at the top we would say, what are the sources we can look at? We can look at books. We can look at articles. We can look at the Internet, you know, at that point, you know, websites, blogs and things like that. And then down the side, the kids would have all their questions that they generated that they wanted to know about that person. Right. And the way I just so appreciate the way you wanted them to look at, you know, not just facts and figures but what were their dreams what were their goals what was stopping them and all of that and and now with ai they're going to be able to do much much more um you that was the ice tip of the iceberg of the project there's more oh yeah, yeah. you were impressed so, so, say there's more, more. <laughs> yeah i you know i do want to say one thing though that's not ai but worked out fabulously when my kids were done with their biography project they made statues out of paper and put them on sticks and those sticks went in cinder blocks and all the kids went outside and we had 28 different people quote, you know, the, the paper statues and they invited the kindergarten, first and second grade kids to meet these people. Oh, that's good. Cool. And so it was the person who had oh. written the biography introduced his 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 figure and then they had conversations That's it cool. was something else so very yeah. non-ai but hey ruth i'm i'm just going to say that for me ai is a make it's you did a maker project with that, That's, right? i was just going to say like i'm very much a maker too just so you know yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. okay and, and yeah. i think i i think when when we're deciding which tool to use we're not using it like a like a, like a maker, right? Right. And so the more we can figure out how to use it as as makers, the better. And I I'm just going to waste all of your time just to say that I'm exploring now, just as an example, because of Aditya's um, and and because of uh, perplexity, um, I'm totally interested, and in, it's quite possible for us to use thinking partners, writing partners, and attach. Um, a web search to them that will then attach sources the way perplexity does. Like that's within our grasp. We can like I've I've done all the research on it. I just have to get our tech guy to f figure that out. But that's the kind of thing I think we want to look at the tools, see what they do, and then see how we can build them into our our things. But anyway, so, I got a question. The, yeah, please. Um, it's going in a wonky direction for Alina, uh, Alana and, and Marina. Um, do you guys did you guys work out an AI use policy for your school or your district? Hmm. So that's and, an and interesting did, question. Did that, What's a part two? Go ahead. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I was curious about an AI use policy. If you did it at a classroom level, Marina, or if Alana, you're doing it on behalf of your district, or if you guys together, or, or you, Alana, separately, are having those discussions among your peers who are dealing with system level rollouts. So. That's a very good question. I think I am, I'm going to say I'm an unpopular belief in the world of AI speakers. I know that a lot of the other people that are big in AI are like pushing this policy. Um, mm. We are not district leaders. Right. I am. Um, I, my joke, it's a joke. Um, <laughs> unless my superintendent or my board of education tells me I have to make one. Uh, I'm not making one and, and I'll explain why. Um, okay. So I believe that the use of AI differs from district to district, building to building, teacher to teacher, class to class, assignment to assignment. 
How could you have a policy when it's literally going to change based on the assignment in that room? So what I do believe is that I believe in academic integrity. I believe in handing in work that's reflective of your own thoughts, ideas, and beliefs. That's accurate. And what I did do is I did revise my existing acceptable use policy, and I did add in language about academic integrity and computer assistance on work. I never put the words AI in there, and I did, um, I, I think it's fun if you take an AI policy. So here, it's a tool, right? AI is a tool. If you take an AI policy and you swap the word AI, with the word internet, Google, or even pencil, and you read it, you're going to literally laugh out loud. You're going to laugh. And and like in 10 years, if you look back on an AI policy, it's just kind of going to be a little bit humorous. I understand why some people do it. I just think that it's a tool. And as our job, it's acceptable use policy, teaching children how to use this like in an acceptable way. And I think where it does belong is in a classroom guidelines, not policy, but guidelines. And I have a really great example of all of these things that I'm happy to share with you. I have, exa- and I do have examples of district policies and I have de- examples of ones that are really great that have um, no AI and some AI and they did a really great job. And I could give you on um, the New York school board sample policy. I could give you all the policies what I really love is a classroom guidelines that basically says, um, is AI, did your teacher say you could use AI on the assignment? Yes or no? Do they, they approve the tool you can use and that the teacher should really be supervising it. So attaching the link like Marina does and the students submitting the link. So for me, it's not a, if, if you use AI, it's not a yes or no, it's a how. And as long as the teacher can really see how the student used it, and they know that they're using it the right way, we, we encourage it. So my opinion is a little bit not popular, but I think it's really putting the power in the hands of the teacher and making the teacher make the decision. Because if you're in a computer science class teaching about AI and you really wanna push it, that's appropriate in that class. But if you're in an ELA class writing an essay or something, and the teacher is going to give you more guidelines or parameters on if or how it's used, it's going to look very different. Mm-hmm. So who am I as a district administrator to tell a teacher how they should be using it? I, sure. I just don't feel like that's appropriate, but I told you, unpopular opinion, and a lot of people probably don't like my opinion, but. No, I, I appreciate here. the Yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, and the, the kind of through lines, I mean, it can be very crazy in terms of you know full on compliance, which seems ridiculous, and then freakouts around safety, which seems contextual and kind of crazy as well. Although there are issues about citation and use and so forth, and all that does get negotiated at a classroom level with the teacher and their students. It's to the extent there's an AI po- a use policy that. But there's no media policy. It's it's like Mm. media literacy is a skill they learn. Now, AI literacy is just a skill they learn. It's a tool and a skill and a curriculum. Mm -hmm. It's not a policy. Like, Yeah, I mean, I think this is really worth unpacking. It's an interesting question for why is it even, what what does it mean to have a policy and how do you push back on folks who demand one? Yeah. I'm totally frustrated by um, the, that it, it would be a very natural moment to go to a DTML because you, you made a video about some of this, mm-hmm. did you not? Mm-hmm. Honestly, uh, but, but Marina, we're, I do, I do want to hear more of, of your classroom. And we'll, we'll see what happens. Aditya, can you share your screen or not? Uh, sure. Um, and to be honest, the video uh, we had like we, we we started on the project like way too late. We had months to do it, but we just decided. But we were a bit busy, so by the time so, we just quit apologizing, to... just just talk. Show. Yeah. So we just decided to you know cut the cut the. The, the access and just like make sure that the core message is like make sure we focus on the core message and what we're actually trying to say rather than some of the fluff or something because fluff at the end of the day is not it's it's nice but it's not what's the most important part if you and i'll see oh should i try this i could just oh okay i think that might, might actually be a little better 
I have the MP3, I have the MP4 as the video, so I'm just going to try that instead of going off YouTube. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to share, but you can try. In we should have tested this earlier, sorry. Hello. Okay. Let's uh, check it. And welcome. Yep, we can hear it. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how this. My internet connection in this room is not the best. So. To this reason. Oh, there it goes. Come on. I'll try to read. Let's see how it goes. Unless you want to put the YouTube link in the chat and one of us could share it, that might be better. Yeah, I'll try. Uh, right now, I'm trying to use the. Um, I'll, I'll try to also share the YouTube link if I can just do that. And I'll just do the video link. And then, can you guys see it? Uh, Hello, yeah. and welcome to the uses of artificial. So, before we begin, let's define some terms in the field of AI. Artificial intelligence or AI is machines replicating human thought. Deep learning machines take in data to try to replicate human thought to an and learning to analyze the data. Large language models or LLMs are programs that take in large amounts of data and use deep learning to understand and answer user prompts and questions. AGPT is one of the first publicly available LLMs and was many people's introduction to, into deep learning based AI. Oh, here all the videos in history. Uh, our focus for these videos hmm. specifically yeah, on the because that is a field where many people are struggling to define whether tasks are ethical, whether it be students or school administrators. When the are due, let's get started. Welcome to the next video in the series, Please Move Tests. There are many ways to use AI to help you practice for tests. Some ways to do this are generating worksheets, asking AI to simplify passages from a textbook, giving ideas for some methods and memorization techniques. This is ethical because you're not having AI complete the test for you, and you're essentially creating additional teacher resources without needing a teacher to create one for you. In the future, this can make teachers' lives easier as they don't need to create as, uh, uh, as much of their teacher of their practice papers. Some great way to do this is by taking a grammar rules sheet, putting it into an LLM like ChatGPT, and creating, um, creating worksheets to, to practice for an English test, or perhaps asking it to design some terms that you don't understand in the science study guide. To conclude, there are many great ways to use AI to help practice for tests, and it's the great ethical use of AI to help students and teachers. See you in the next video. <laughs> you have six of them. Good. Welcome on the uh, it's cutting one of them. Um, okay, just cutting oh. this little video. They're all like under a minute long. I think the last one's like, yeah, go ahead. Uh, on brainstorming with AI, there, there are many ways to brainstorm AI, such as creating ideas for problems for writing, brainstorming arguments for argumentative essays or debates, and brainstorming for things like project ideas. As always, ask a teacher or instructor for permission before using. AI to ideas. This is ethical as you're simply using AI as sort of a partner to bounce ideas off. However, the teacher says no, this is unethical. In conclusion, AI is a great method to help brainstorm ideas. However, make sure to get permission first. See you in the next video. Go. Hello, and welcome to the next video in this series Get Back on Writing with AI. There are so many ways to use AI to help your writing. Some examples are using AI to find counterarguments in an argumentative essay, using AI to figure out information you may you be missing. You have to cite the law on essay. that one. Sorry. Using AI to check for improper. I think I got, I mainly got the idea from what I did with Ms. Chirac. I think she yeah. was the one who kind of. I'm just teasing but, you. Go ahead. Go ahead. I also yeah. wouldn't exactly know how to cite. No, I, I, it was just a joke. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proper grammar, grammar and spelling. I actually have citation guides for AI. Yeah, I check that. As always, get, get teacher permission when using AI for a school assignment. You can also use it at home for any personal writing pieces you do at home. It's an ethical use because it uh, takes the piece you've written and simply gives advice on where to take it next. See you in the next video. <laughs>
Now that you've seen some examples of ethical use of AI, it's time to learn how to decide if a task is ethical. So here's how to decide if a task is ethical. Step one, ask yourself if you're using AI as a tool or to do the work for you. If it's the latter, then it is not an ethical use of AI. Make sure you, you're using it to improve your skills or, are using it, or if you're using it on school assignment, uh, ask, for, ask for teacher permission. Step three, make sure that you are honest with how you're using AI. And if the teacher asks, show them how you're using it. Who knows? You may just give them a, an idea for a cool project. Now, here's some examples of, ethical, of unethical uses of AI. Using AI without teacher permission, using AI to write things for you, using AI to grade students' work for originality. The AI checkers, for instance, said the Constitution was written by AI, and these checks are not always accurate. Now that you've so the uh, ethical and not unethical uses for AI, make sure you always stick with the ethical uses. And when in doubt, go with your gut. If it feels unethical, chances are it is. After school, <laughs> administrators and teachers, let students experiment with AI within these guidelines. Let them try out new things. After all, this technology really isn't going anywhere. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for watching this video series, and we hope you've learned something new. Oh, that's oh, cool, great. Cool. cool, cool, yeah. I think most of that like one to go like that, right? One of the one of the videos we have to do like two takes or something, but most of what we just did is it. We created the script that did it in one take. So that's why cool. there's some like mistakes in there, but overall, I, I think you need to work on the visuals. But otherwise, yeah, I'm just I'm just messing with you. You know that. Right? <laughs> yeah, okay. I think visuals are definitely. If I had like a little bit more time, that's probably what I would have spent it on. You know, making so, that thank slide. You. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, any other responses, thoughts? Uh, it just ahead? reminded me a lot of Marina students' video. Marina, what do you think? Does it remind you a lot of what the the panel video that I took of your kids? A little clip. I think I need to share it. Like it's one minute. Can I you think share it? Oh, great. Yeah, great. I think you guys need to watch it because it's truly remark. Again, remember this is unscripted, and when everyone, I said some. Oh, tell them about what you do in your classroom with technology. Th the first thing was artificial intelligence, also known as AI. And then they went on this whole thing. And I wish I captured all of it on tape. And then I was like, guys, you could talk about all the other things you do. That's not just AI, but they were really loving it. And then one of the, the audience members said, um, the, advice, the question was, what would you tell a teacher that was hesitant to use AI? And this is what they said, unsolicited. Um, Can you present? Yeah, hold on. Um, I didn't know how I could share just a window, but let's just, just share the whole thing. And then oh, there the we go. I, I, I got it. Uh, got it. Um, to share audio. I don't know if this is, tell me if you could hear it. Okay, go ahead. Did yep, you hear that? Yep, yep. Okay. Say, well, if you want to do this, you have to make sure it's credible before you go on to it. Like, if you said, like, if you said, if they said, how about this, and they pointed out Wikipedia, no, say, you can't no, because it's... But do you think teachers should use it? If they're not using it, what would you tell them to do with their students? Um, so tell the students... No, if the teacher's like, I'm not using it, should I use it? What would you, you say? You could, but well, you, you have could, to be using it. You have to, right. Yeah, you, you, wouldn't be a, you wouldn't sign in. You would have to do like your... Yeah, yeah. 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 you just have to take all of your information. You don't sign up for it. So, and chat to your team, whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Don't yeah. use it because it, it didn't agree to, like, yeah, it's track wheel. Or that. Why does your dad do you Any other questions we have for them? Have any questions? Where did we cover everything? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, go ahead. They were so cute. Wow, thanks for sharing that. That's cool. cool. Marina did a great job educating them on data privacy and security and, and AI and media literacy. So it's all her. Just, mm -hmm. just a, a, and there's a lot in between here, but one of the things that Marina and I and Alana are working on is let's set up an experiment in writing partners 
and and we've decided to you Marina, you called them pen names. I like that. We're gonna all those kids you saw there are gonna get pen names and um so all of their information will not go anywhere and except for it'll be safe. But um and I, I, I will say very briefly that your 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 kids ended up at this point with PowerPoint biographies. And you're going to take those, the language from them, and put it into documents. And then we're going to put that into writing partners and then um, try to figure out what kind of writing partners would be good for a third grader to have because they're going to make these into podcasts as well. Is that, that I, I tried to say that really fast, but you should well, take over yeah, now. You, you know? have a lot of the right components. So we use PowerPoint for drafting and revising and editing. And the reason we use PowerPoint is because each slide represents a different section. So I've personally found that with, um, I, I prefer using the PowerPoints with the kids than a document because it keeps things separate and um, siloed, but also connected as we bridge over to docs. So um, yeah, so we talked about taking those drafts and um, experimenting with writing partners because the, ultimately the goal is, and, and the kids are also playing around with this already, with their practicing, because I've taken on this other deep interest in oral reading fluency this year. So I've been looking for lots of creative ways to support my students as they're reading and building up their fluency. I wanted them to read their own writing in a podcast format. So um, they have a nice mentor. Alana's going to come in and help. We have great tools for that too. We use we Video and I saw those um, microphones too. <laughs> yeah. So right now the kids are just doing a lot of practicing and reading and um, and recognizing that background noise doesn't help with sharing and expressing and that they don't want to read like robots and then messing around with audio. So there's a lot of like micro skills that are not related to artificial intelligence at all. Um, and yeah, so it's called the perseverance pod. And I was just talking to Alana and I was like, I'd love to like drop an episode like in the summer when they're done with school and not thinking about it and just send it out to their parents like every week um, throughout the summer. Um, just as a reminder of like the good work that they did during their third grade year and those, you know, perseverance stories. Part of it is a story of their perseverance and now the story of somebody that they researched. Mm -hmm. They are so good. Sometimes, you know, Marina loves to work on this just at all hours. I get texts from her with little video clips of the student work and it they're so good right marina they're yeah really i sent her some yesterday they were really good i just they, they're they're really working on refining their voices the way that they sound mm -hmm. um we did a lot of work with like ted talks and public speaking last year personally so mm -hmm. i think that this was like the next step for me to work on with students um i really want them to also see their work as meaningful and relevant and and produced and published in a real life format like a podcast i mean everyone's listening yeah, to podcasts. that's what we really marina and i really believe in creating authentic learning opportunities and making sure that our students know that they have a voice and that their voice matters and that they they can their creations can go beyond the four walls of their classroom or their school building or district. And that I think if you can learn that at eight years old, then you, you could do anything. I have to, I'm sorry, I have to leave, but this is yeah, just, yeah. this has yeah. been absolutely terrific. I can't thank you all enough. It's wonderful. I can just see how over the years, how this, sort of great teaching that I learned from Moffat, really, all the things you're saying, all the things you're saying he talks about and has talked about since 1968, right? And I just see all of it coming to life with, with all of you and moving into the future. So anyway, and, it's very exciting. And and the next, and I, I will come next time. Are Ruth, you going to do Ruth, elementary again? Yeah, why not? I, I, yeah, oh, I, I will see. One more time. 
<laughs> yeah, we, we should. We should. Um, it depends on whether or not uh, Jill sedronsky has got her. She may have her um, students here, but it it will oh, it will okay. be stu it will be student focused you anyway. Can, um, can, Ruby, I know, do you have I, any questions yeah. about elementary? Because I'm recording a podcast tomorrow about AI in the elementary classroom. So, anyone here have any questions about AI in the elementary That's classroom? That's a good way to Let end. Know yeah. because yeah. I'm doing an interview with Holly Clark tomorrow, and I need questions. So, okay. So, do we have say your... more about Holly Clark? Yeah. Say more Wait, about her. Just, Ruthie, you have to go, right? Yes, I have to go. I just don't know how to. Okay, email. so with questions. I'm going to put it in your, in the chat, in your chat. Okay. So grab it. Um, and then you can email me. If, and Ruth, do you see the generative age book there on the table? If you click. Yes, that? I've already ordered it. Okay. <laughs> and then you can also, okay. And you can also find the podcast that way too. Yeah. And if you uh, just go to my website and do contact me, you can email me that way too. But I just put my email in the chat, but you could fill out the contact me if you can't remember my email. Ruth, and I'm recording you, tomorrow. I, I so know you have to, sorry, I want to get to the question. I, I just want to mention that Ruth has has like identified and pulled them out like Moffitt's is it 26 um developmental intellectual right. what are they called right. again? Sorry. Yes, it's a I made a large lucid chat ch chart, which they would love. So yeah, we'll see if we can get that to you. What, what are they again? They're developmental. So they, they enable it, you to. Called, it's called it's called growth sequences. Growth sequences. Yeah, so, he has twenty six growth sequences because the idea is very hard to give feedback to kids. If you don't know what you're looking for, right? If you don't have a really good grasp of the ways children grow in all aspects of writing, so if you have that, it's easier to give the kids feedback. And right. so that was his intention. And he, he wrote a book called, uh, you know, Growth Sequences. However, not everybody's gonna be an expert like you are on all those. No, <laughs> and oh, I'm no. I'm no, 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 don't say that. No, no, but what I'm trying to say is that, and, and this is a message that you and I, think we keep missing each other. But I want to figure out how AI can accelerate the identification of those things in writing yes. and other things too. And I think it could do that. Like it's like a perfect matrix for AI to play with. But just a, another thought. Yeah. The, the yeah, and it would be the, nice. To, yeah. It would be nice to do it in collaboration with these people. Okay, yeah. I do have to go. You're just. Bye. I'm, I'm thank blown you. away. Thank I'm thank blown you. away. Thank Bye. <laughs> great, great. Alana, we give Alana questions about elementary school. We'll, we'll end at that. You give me questions. I'm doing a whole podcast episode tomorrow. Aditya, do you have do you have any siblings who are younger? I do have a fifth grader. Uh, yeah. I have a fifth so, grade. What are your questions for his classroom? Hmm. Um, what is the earliest that you've ever seen someone experiment with AI in a classroom? That's a great question. I already know what her answer is going to be, but that is one of my questions because I think people are going to be impressed with her response. But that's a great question. And and how, right? Because just because they're using it doesn't mean, like, how are they using it? They're not using it like you are, right? That's a great question. I love it. I'm curious about the, how their experience of AI in the outside world is going to be different than it is in the classroom and how they see that, how kids yeah. see that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're using Snapchat already and they come yeah. into the classroom and, you know, we have a tendency to, to not make them as cool as you know, our AI tools as cool as the ones in the outside world. So that's interesting. Thing. The one that Marina and I have been exploring, I, I want to say also, is that a lot of um, elementary school teachers do the AI for them, for the students, and we're trying to figure out what it's, how it's different if they actually like manage the platform themselves. Okay. Also, I did have a question for you, Mr. Allison. What is this yeah. Writing Partners website? It looks like <laughs> now comment from an alternate dimension. That's exactly what it is. Can I can I quote you? No, so it's an attempt. It's an attempt to simplify now comment a little bit, so that it could go into a school or a district, 
like even your teacher says it would be hard for her to take um, now comment to other teachers because of sort of how complex it is. And this might be a way to simplify it. Interesting. So are like, the end of the system like connected at all? Say it again. Are they like connected at all? Like if I have an app. Yes, yes. So this, they're the same code. Yeah. Aditya, you can help us with it. We'll talk. Sure. Okay. So I, I, I don't think I said, but um, for the debate next month, uh, they gave us some very interesting news at today's meeting. Apparently, they're flying in of six six teams from the Orange County Debate League in California, and um. And so, they're, so for them, it's like a field trip. Like, oh, you're gonna go see, you're gonna go sightseeing in New York, and then after that, you get to spend a day debating with a, with a bunch of local kids. And um, that's cool. Last time they came over, here, I found them a Facebook post from the last time they came over here. Uh, they absolutely annihilated us. So, because <laughs> <laughs> what they do is they have like apparently what I've heard is that they have all their coaches prepare their cases for them. And then all the time that we spend jet formulating our arguments, they're practicing their arguments. And um, yeah. So Dina, I'm gonna Aditya, I'm gonna answer your question about writing partners in a, in a very specific way. What if we created a group for debate on writing partners and we organized all of the sort of partners that you've figured out? It would be easier yeah, to share that than like introducing right? so that's the idea. But we, Again, we can talk. Yeah, that, that, I think that's interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, cool. We we should uh, get off here. We're yeah, I think it's like yeah, time. Like yeah, it's yeah. getting late. Um, Marina, thank you so much. I wish you could have shared more, and you'll share more next time, maybe. Yes? Well, next week. Next week. Yeah, well, so good. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Ongoing yeah, conversation. We had a really thank great you. impromptu uh, conversation with the kids around plagiarism and academic dishonesty oh, the other day too. So I'm happy to talk about that. And wow. can you say that. more now or not? So well, we're signing off. I'll save no, it for I know. next okay. week. We'll save it for next week. <laughs> Just want to say you never have to apologize for this was AI and that's not because like I love when AI sponsors a conversation and then the conversation in, inspires an AI thing to do. Yeah. You know, so back and mm -hmm. forth. Yeah, because yeah, that's what I think it's just a tool. Mm -hmm. Not just, it is a tool, not just a tool. It is a tool, but that's not what's important. The important thing is the learning and the teaching and the growing, right? I've answered that policy question when I'm, the, the, when there's a policy about electricity, you know, let me know. But <laughs> so, but, but, but just to say, I, I talked with somebody who like, hated fluorescent lights and she got, she bought lamps. So she wanted to use the electricity in a very specific way in her classroom. But anyway, just <laughs> I can play this metaphor. But <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye.